belligerent, distrusting of outsiders, happy to be everyone else's villain. It was that approach which helped Port win an incredible 34 premierships in the South Australian Local League before the AFL allowed it to become Port Power and go fishing in a bigger pond. If we had our preference, we would have retained the black and white in the magpie. There's no question of that. We couldn't. We were told that that was impossible because of Collingwood, and so we had to compromise. But um, we hope in, in adding the, the two colours that we have and, and changing the name that we we've still retain the old traditions. I think we have. Would it be fair to say that this club hates to compromise? Yeah. Look at that tactic. That's what it's been like all night. It's just relentless. The reservoir of talent at Port was always impressive, and even before the power emerged, you could have named an 18 from players already running around with AFL clubs. Among them, champions like Carlton's Craig Bradley, Essendon Brownlow medalist Gavin Wanganeen, and Collingwood's Nathan Buckley. Of that trio, only Wanganeen came back. Outsiders said Port would be lucky to win a couple of games. Who were these other kids, and if any of them were any good, why hadn't they been snapped up before? How did you do it? I mean, the perception outside is that they found these young, talented players, stuck them in a cupboard, locked the door for three years, and when Port Adelaide came out, they turned the key and out came these players. We locked them in a cupboard, turned the key, and hit them for three years. That's about what we did. Why are they so important to you? Well, you're born and bred it. Can't knock it out of you. No. It's just poor Adelaide, and I can't help it. You make it sound like it's a bit of an affliction. Uh, I think it is. Ma Wilson hasn't been to the footy since 1976. Big crowds bring on panic attacks. But once you've enjoyed a cup of cha with Ma, it's easy to picture what a formidable figure she'd have been in the outer. Blazingly loyal, terrific tonsils, and the courage to take on any bludger who dared cross her path. He came close enough to hit one of the kids and I just picked my umbrella up and hit him across the shoulders and I said, now get the hell out of here. Did he go? Yes, he went for his life because he knew damn well if he didn't, he'd get more. And while 35,000 others were on their way to Footy Park, me and Ma sat in the kitchen, wandering through scrapbooks, winding back the years. And you reckon if you'd had a few more quid, you would have painted the well, whole thing Well, when we were younger, when, as I said, we struggled in our married life at the beginning, like everybody does, even now. Uh, everything would have been, floor coverings and all would have been black and white. Everything would have been black and white. Hides the dirt and shows your pride, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, well, I don't say it about hides the dirt, but I mean, it, it shows it the pride of the family, you know. Primus again takes it out of the middle. Well, we know the Geelong at home caused people to take notice. But it was the next round against the Adelaide Crows which really mattered. In 1990, Port Adelaide applied to join the AFL. The bid was rejected, but it did hasten the arrival of a composite team from South Australia. Port fans kindly call the Crows the bastard child of Port. Don't ask me about the Crows because we barrack against them. But and I think you'll find most Port Adelaide true supporters do. Primus, oh he tapped it down with the left hand.